Welcome to the TMBC Network. What? Uh, <laughs> God damn it! It's just roll in through. Hot. We should do this. Just keep it. Just keep it's it coming in hot from the TMBC Network. Welcome to Bad Audiobooks, a parody brought to you by our tall su- supporters on Patreon. I'm Nick Masmanian, along with my co-host Kent Heidelman. Thank you so much for listening to our show about good books read badly. What is coming off the shelf today? We continue our adventure of Sherlock Holmes and the Sussex Vampire. This is part two, right? The Vampire of Sussex. Whatever. The point is, it's part two. Part two of the vampire story. We'll see if I find my British accent. Let's jump right in. And we're back. I will. Damn it. <laughs> I lost <laughs> it as soon as it hit record. <laughs> okay, hang on, hang on. I will not see him. I will not. Nah, damn it. Fuck it. I can't it's do bad audiobooks, man. I know, but I want to at least attempt an English accent. <laughs> this is just a what a. Ugh. Lord Kensington. I can only do the shot. I can only do the posh shit, so. A fiend, a, th- a fiend, a fiend. Oh, they what? They afford homes, so they, they can be posh. Okay. They've oh, got what? servants. Hmm? They have servants. I. Poor, poor speaking English. But, uh, poor speaking servants, but yes, they have servants. So they, they, they've got some money. All right. Oh, what I shall do with this devil. Can I help you in any way? No. No one can help. It is finished. All is destroyed. Do what I will. All is destroyed. She she got nihilistic as fuck. Dude, she went to the fucking edge. (coughs) The woman must have seen some strange delusion. She's gone goth. (laughs) She's opening a hot topic outlet nearby. I could know I could not see honest Bob Ferguson in such a character. In such in the character of fiend or devil. Okay. Madam, I said, your husband loves you dearly. He is deeply grieved that this is happening. Again, she no turned. Shit. Yeah, right. She murdered his kid. Again, she turned on me. He's grieving. Those glorious eyes. God, he really is into her eyes. He loves me. <laughs> yes. <laughs> It changed. Oh, he loves me. <laughs> but do I not love him? Do I not love him even to sacrifice myself rather than break his dear heart? Rather than that sacrifice my, his boy <laughs> for my dear heart. <laughs> I only want to eat the child. <laughs> that is how I love him. <laughs> and yet he could think of me. And he could speak of me so. Yeah, wait a minute. Yeah, he is so full of grief that he cannot understand. No, he cannot understand, but he should trust. Will you not see him? <laughs> I suggested. Trust no. I will murder his next yeah. child. <laughs> no, no. I cannot forget these terrible words, nor the look upon his face. I will not see him. Go now. You can do nothing for me. Tell me only one thing. I want my child. I have a right to my child. That is the only message I can send him. She turned her face to the wall and would say no more. <laughs> no more. <laughs> she just looks the wall away. Now. Can you imagine just someone looking away from you? <laughs> I'm looking at the wall. I'm done now. Okay. I returned to the room upstairs. Clearly Holmes had not found any drugs still since he was standing. Well, uh, Ferguson and Holmes still st- uh, sat st- still sat by the fire. Ferguson listened. What? <laughs> Is that the fire sound effect? Sure. <laughs> paper, Oops. paper. What can't you do? <laughs> <laughs> okay. <clears throat> the crackling of the fire. <laughs> okay, where am I? There we are. Home sat by the fire. Ferguson listened moodily to my account of the interview. Uh, uh how can I send her the child? He I'm said. pretty moody. <laughs> how do I know what strange impulse might come upon her? I, how can I ever forget how she, uh, you know, rose from beside it with its blood? Its blood. You know, it's not a he anymore. It's its <laughs> blood it's, on it's her a, lips. It's an object now. Your son is a piece of wood. Everything's an object. I own everything inside my house, including her, him, 
the servants. You, he, you're inside my house. I own you too. What? He oh. he shuddered that. He shuddered at the recollection. That was a shudder. The child is safe with Mrs. Mason, and there they must remain. A smart maid, the only modern thing which he had made, which had seen in the house. What? He brought in had brought in some tea, and she was serving it to the door. No, wait. She was serving it the door as she was serving it. Ah, thank you. As she was serving it, the door opened, and a youth <laughs> and a youth entered the room. He was a remarkable lad, pale faced and fair haired, with excitable light blue eyes which blazed into a sudden flame of emotion and joy as they rest upon his father. He rushed forward and threw his arms around the neck around his neck with an abandon of a loving girl. I did not know that you would do yet. I should have been here to meet you. Oh, I am so glad to see you. Ferguson gently disengaged himself from the embrace. (laughs) With with a little show of embarrassment. I said I would call or text. (laughs) This is getting too close and much. Dear old chap. Said he, patting the flaxen head with a very tender hand. Oh, dear old chap, I came early because my <laughs> friends... Your fucking face. <laughs> because my friends, Mr. Holmes and Dr. Watson, have been persuaded to come down and we're spend... F- we're French? Best friends. <laughs> <laughs> to spend the evening with us. Is that Mr. Holmes, the detective? Oh, you're doing three. Yes. Revenge is mine! <laughs> The youth looked at us with a very penetrating and, <coughs> as it seemed to me, unfriendly gaze. <coughs> what about your other child, Mr. Ferguson? <laughs> oh! ass, ass Holmes. Oh, I, I, I hit my reserve. Might we make the acquaintance of the baby? Oh, my God. I want to meet her. Mrs. Mason. To bring the baby down. <coughs> oh, we know. I what to ask Mrs. Mason to bring the baby down? <laughs> I like the direction," said Ferguson. The boy went off with a curious shambling gait, which <laughs> told m- which told my sur- my surgical eyes <laughs> that he was suffering from a weak pa- a weak spine. Presently he returned, and behind him came a tall, gaunt woman bearing in her arms a very beautiful child, dark skin, golden haired. A wonderful mixture of the Saxon and the Latin. Ferguson, because uh, we're breeds as humans. <laughs> the Ferguson was uh, evidently devoted to, for he took it into his arms and fondled it most tenderly. Mm, I'm going to skip over that weirdness and go back to the fact that uh, Watson's got very... His observations of women <laughs> and, well, children are very weird. It's like, with my surgical eyes, I looked and saw inside his body. Well, I mean, the whole idea, I think, back in the day was that science was, like, still kind of weird. It was, like, still it was burgeoning. Like a magic. Yeah, it was still burgeoning. Like, you know, if you ever see the nip, uh, yeah. the nick, the nick, that's it. I know what you're yeah. yeah, thank you. Uh, yeah, like, that whole thing. That was at the same time. Yeah. So, it's like, this is, like, him trying to interject some science into fiction where he's, like, the doctor knew because uh, he has this training and stuff. So, it allowed him to... It allowed Doyle to be able to, like, you know, fudge with some stuff and add layers to the to the story and actually give uh, Ho- uh, Watson some, like, not agency, some but, powers. like, yeah, yeah. Like, because, you know, everyone looks like Sherlock Holmes the whole fucking time and because he's like, nah! and not because he's a drug added, you know, no, drug addict. perfectly but, normal. Yeah, you know, it's totally fine to, to, Ye- to, keel. to, to, to play your violin terribly. Um, <clears throat> so the point is uh, it just gives Watson something else and it gives the reader like observational powers as well so that might come into play later on in the story or be used as a red herring but the point is it gave that uh that point of view so that way the character has something more to it other than just being a witness cool <laughs> sorry <laughs> uh i didn't who, mean to let that drag out so. who's uh who's speaking that would be you as the father uh, as Ferguson. 
because you're I fondling wish. the small child. I guess it's implied that he's going to speak because yeah. this is the last person we've spoken about. Which is in 100%. Um, Fancy anyone having a heart at him? <laughs> he muttered as he glanced down at the small, angry pucker upon the cherub's throat. What the fuck? Uh, it's because of the mark on the throat. Sure, I know. It's just really weird. It was that. It was in that. <laughs> it was at that moment that I chanced to, to. It was at that moment that I chant. I that I chanced to glance at Holmes and saw a most singular intentness <laughs> in his expression. <sighs> With your angle on this, I just imagine him staring wide-eyed at him, just like... <sighs> <sighs> his face was uh, set as if it had been carved out of old ivory, and his eyes, which <sighs> had glanced for a moment at father and child, were now fixated with eager curiosity upon something at the other side of the room. <laughs> Squirrel. Following his gaze, I could only guess that he was looking out the window at the melancholy, dripping garden. It was true that a shutter had half-closed outside and obstructed the view, but nonetheless it was certainly at the window that Holmes was fixating his concentrated attention. <laughs> then he smiled, and his eyes came back to the baby. <sighs> it was... it. On its chubby neck, where there it was the small puckered muck. Without speaking, Holmes examined it with care. <laughs> Finally, he shook one of the dimpled fists, which waved in front of him. Good little man! You have made a strong start in life! Yeah! Nurse! <laughs> I should wish to have a word with you in private! He took her aside and spoke earnestly it. for a few minutes. I'm earnest. I only heard the last words, which were... Your anxiety will soon, I hope, be set at rest. The woman who seemed to be a, a, to be a shower silent kind of creature withdrew with the child. So, sup with Mrs. Mason. <laughs> What's she like? <laughs> Asked Holmes. Not very not very prepossessing externally. Is that right? Prepossessing? Yeah, that's right. You said I that don't right. understand what any of this means. Not very prepossessing externally. Uh, as you can see. I can't translate all British. But a heart of gold devoted to the child. I think that means that she's very cold externally and but she's very warm on the inside. Like a, like a fucking dead planet or something. Yeah, there you go. Did you like her, Jack? <laughs> What's up, Jack? Who's Jack? Maybe Ferguson's Jack? It must be a term or something. I don't know. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, that makes sense. Yeah. Holmes turned suddenly upon his, his uh, the boy. Oh, it's the boy. The boy's name is Jack. Right, derp. His ex You're still there. His expressive <laughs> mobile face shadowed over and took... And he shook his head. <laughs> Jackie has very strong likes and dislikes, said Ferguson, <laughs> putting his arm around the boy. Luckily, I am one of his likes. <laughs> the boy cooed and nestled his head upon his <sighs> father's breast. Ferguson gently disengaged him. <laughs> <laughs> there is, uh... There's a romance blooming here. No, there, it's just... It's, or wilting. It, it's just he doesn't know how to interact with the kid. He's just like, eh, go away. <laughs> uh, you know, it was just that one time. Dude. So uh, run away, little Jackie. <laughs> <laughs> Said he, and he went. with, And he watched his son with loving eyes until he disappeared. Mm. Now, Mr. <laughs> Holmes. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> oh, God. Continue. Your turn. Oh, God. Now, Mr. Holmes, he continued when the boy was gone. I really feel that I have brought you on a fool's errand. For what can you possibly do? Save give me your sympathy. It must be an exceedingly delicate and complex affair from your point of view. Go ahead. 
<laughs> so oh, it's graceful. certainly delicate. We can't even touch said, it. <laughs> said my friend with an amused smile. <laughs> but I have been struck Jesus Christ. up to now with its complexity. It has been a case for intellectual deduction. But when this original intellectual deduction is confirmed point by point by quite a number of independent incidents, then the subjective becomes objective. And we can say confidently that we have reached our goal. Woo! I had, in <laughs> fact, reached it before we left Baker Street. And I didn't like wasting everyone's time. <laughs> I know, I'm about <laughs> to say it, right? <laughs> I thought you might be holding, and I was right. <laughs> the rest has merely been observation and confirmation. Ferguson put his big hand on his furrowed forehead. Yeah. You, for heaven's sakes, Holmes, he said coarsely. If you could see the truth in this matter, do you do not keep me in suspense? How do I stand? Is it with my legs? <laughs> I don't know. I'm a doctor, you know. I could tell you how you stand. What shall I do? I care nothing. As to how you have found your facts, so long as you've really got them, you know? I hope you got them! <laughs> you got them, facts! Thanks, Conan. Um, <laughs> certainly I owe you an explanation, and you shall have it. But, uh, I'm gonna need my payment first. Uh, <laughs> an eighth would do anything just to really cut the edge Joe, off. Holmes just solved the case, because uh, we, we really can't afford to be here any longer. Ah, oh, man. But you'll permit me to handle the matter in my own way, huh? Is the lady capable of seeing us, Watson? She is She is ill, but still quite rational. Very good. Let's raid her dresser. <laughs> it is only her presence that we can clear the matter up. Let's go up to her. She will not see me, cried Ferguson. Oh, come on, man. Yeah, she will. <laughs> Said Holmes. He scribbled a few lines upon a sheet of paper. Hey, sheet of paper. You got it. You at least have the entree, Watson. You got those edibles? What? I couldn't. Will I couldn't you have the goodness to give the lady this note? I ascended again and handed the note to Dolores, who cautiously opened the door. A minute later, I heard a cry from within. A cry oh. in which joy and surprise seemed to be blended. Oh. oh, my God. Dolores looked out. She will see them. She will lessen, she said. You really said stretched she. for that one. Um. Yeah, that one's like, that one's just being you made that shit up. Yeah, I'm like, no one talks like that. No one talks like that. <laughs> <laughs> Even if you're trying with an accent, there's just no way to do no. that. Also, there's a way to write with an actual accent rather than just being like, he don't know English. At uh, at my summons, Ferguson and Holmes came up. As we entered the room, Ferguson took a step or two towards his wife, who had raised herself in the bed. I imagine you're floating over it. But she held out her hand to repulse him, because she has magical powers now. Boing. He sank into the chair. <laughs> See? <laughs> magical powers. <laughs> While Holmes seated himself beside him, after bowing to the lady, who she, who looked at him with wide-eyed amusement. Amazement. Amazement. I can't read. Now let's get the show paid for, Kent. Oh, <laughs> this is a great ad spot. <laughs> Get those, let's get those ads going. Damn pop filter <laughs> getting in the way of my technical prowess. Uh, um, Mick, you've got uh, you've got some stuff. <laughs> I uh, got many stuff. You uh, you write articles, don't you? I do. I write articles on a wide variety of topics on Medium.com. So Medium.com is an online magazine, social media platform of sorts. You can read a bunch of really cool articles depending on your varied interests uh, that that are all written there. I uh, you can find me on medium.com under blt runner that is my name or nick masmanian either one 
And uh, yeah, it's pretty neat. I hope you enjoy my writing about electric cars and other such fiction. What's one of your favorites fiction? that you've uh, you've written? Electric cars uh, are real. If that you've if you've written that you've uh, that you wrote uh, fairly recently. I really like my article about the living life with an electric car, like an actual reality check, because you know those are becoming more and more common. Granted, they have much more higher mileage than what mine has, but the fact is, is that the life that you're going to pick when you get that car is a lot less convenient than a normal gas car, but it's way better in the long run because of cost and actually, you know, having to plan your day. It's just, it's a much, it's a really, I love my choice. I love my car, but I decided to write an article about like the, the life that comes with that. And uh, you can find it on my account. Awesome. Uh, Kent, I hear you have a comic that you drew and wrote and did everything for that's true yeah thanks man uh i uh i wrote and drew a comic called scariest and scream <laughs> can't even speak right now. <laughs> <laughs> scariest in scream forth uh it is a uh, about three kid monsters in a monster town trying to solve a mystery uh, it's a spooky cute little tale and uh it's uh, more of a young adult level but i mean i wrote it for myself and i'm in my 30s so uh, we're all children at heart exactly or have the hearts of children and a jar on our desk <laughs> i've got a couple myself as well uh yeah well so yeah go, go, read, <laughs> go read my comic it's for free <laughs> uh, uh scariest at screwforth.com uh, go check it out uh there's there's um, more Ooh. to come there and mm-hmm. uh, yeah it's a, it's it's a fun little tale all right now let's talk about our patreon oh yeah our patreon today uh, we're gonna talk about fantasy Ooh, the fantasy tier of our Patreon. This is pa- when I would cue the glitter effects. Exactly. So you can you can, s- you can hear all that magical glitter S- in your mind's eye. That's a, that's the. Where's s- the paper? <laughs> there's, there's always paper uh, in your mind if you want it to be. Yeah. Um. So. Uh, but with the uh, Patreon is a great way for you to support the show directly, mm-hmm. and there's a variety of tiers, but the fantasy tier is a, at the moment one of our highest tiers, and it is. Basically, uh, you get all all the previous tiers below it. You get every single one of those benefits uh, mm-hmm. included with the fantasy tier. <clears throat> but specifically, the extra little bit for fantasy. Nick, why don't you explain to them what that bit is? <clears throat> if you choose the fantasy tier, you will not only get the benefit of being in the mystery tier and appearing randomly in a episode each week. That quick cameo. That awesome quick cameo. It will be very fast. Or not very fast, but you will be there. But you will actually be added for an episode to a main or a sub main or one of the more supporting ca- uh, characters. Sp- yeah, and, you'll, uh, you'll be added to a supporting character. With the fantasy tier, not only do you get those things that Kent just said and more, that actually the more is this: you get to be attached to a supporting character. So that means you are inserted into the story for an episode once per month. And ride along with us on our journey through the foggy London or the dark forest or wherever it is we wind up in literature land. Yeah, we will modify slightly uh, one of the supporting characters' names. Mm -hmm. Uh, That way when they're called out, we'll be calling out your name uh, instead. Uh, It's one of our highest level tiers, but again, you do get all the other benefits of all the tiers below it. And the, the added benefit of being able to be able to say, that's me. I'm riding along with Sherlock. That's me annoying him. Or whatever. Whichever character we pick. Yeah. But, yeah, uh, that's the, the upgrade that you get uh, from the mystery tier is the fantasy tier. Go check it out, uh, and it'll be co-starring you. <laughs> and we'll hopefully we'll uh, see you in Bad Audi Book soon. All right, but uh, I think that pretty much wraps up our ads. Why don't you play us back? I think we can dispense of the, with the... La, 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 la. I think we could dispense with Dolores, said Holmes. Let's get rid of the body. <laughs> She's still alive. Oh, very well, madam. If you would rather she stayed, I can see no objection. Wink. Did he just have a conversation with somebody that didn't respond? Huh? Yeah. <laughs> what? Okay. Holmes, now, you have to dial back Ferguson. on the amount of drugs you're taking. Um, just right in that sweet spot. You got some downers? Because I'm really uppers. Ah. Here's some coffee. Now, Mr. Ferguson, I'm a busy man with many calls. I got lots to do. 
I got so many things I'm working on. I got lots of projects. I got a side project that I'm working on. It's really going to take off soon. I think so. It's going to be the big one. And uh, my methods have to be short and direct. I'm always right to the point. Mm-hmm. No one ever says I drone on at all. Mm-hmm. I always say it cuts straight to the matter. It just, I hate delaying things. I don't want to hold you up. But, uh, well, I mean, can yeah, we get we, to we the point? Get to it. Yeah. 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 Get, get the to swiftness the swiftness surgery is the least painful. Oh, my God. Let me first say what will ease your mind. Your wife is very good, a very loving and very ill used woman. Ferguson sat up. With I think a you cry could use someone joy. else in this house. <laughs> <laughs> Prove to me, Mr. Holmes, and I am your debtor forever. To forever. <laughs> I will do so, but in doing so, I must wound you deeply in another direction the backside. You know what I mean? I care nothing. So long as you clear my wife, everything on earth is insignificant compared to that. I'm sorry. No, I just, I don't know who's talking. I'm just going to assume it's Holmes. Yeah. Let me tell you then, the train of reasoning which passed through my mind in Baker Street. First, it started at the locomotive (laughs) as it passed through my forehead. The idea of a vampire was oh, to me absurd. Holmes. What? <laughs> you gotta calm down. There's no hallucinations. Uh, oh, thank you, Watson. Such things do not happen in criminal practice in England. Other countries, maybe. But we don't do vampires. <laughs> and yet your observation was precise. You had not... You had not... You had seen... The lady rise from beside the child's cot with the blood upon her lips. I did. Did it not occur to you that a bleeding... Bleh, 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 bleh. Did it not occur to you that a bleeding wound may be sucked for some other purpose than to draw the blood from it? Was there not a queen in English history who sucked such a wound to draw poison from it? Poison? Poison? Poison, Mr. Holmes. Poison? A South American household. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Holmes, Holmes, Holmes. Let's not, let's not, let's not, uh, you know, go, we, we can't, we can't be, we can't be. Those <laughs> ethnics. <laughs> my instinct felt the presence of those weapons upon the wall before my eyes ever saw them. I knew people outside this country did weird and wild shit. <laughs> And now I've confirmed it, because they're not English, <laughs> is the moral of this Arthur Conan Doyle story. It might have been other poison. Not regular poison, but other poison. Different kinds. The different, there's all sorts of kinds. Fuck the regular shit. This is high grade. But that was what occurred to me when I saw the empty, the little empty quiver beside the small bird bow. I don't even remember that being mentioned. Nope. It was just what I expected to see. It was in my mind. And I didn't mention it to anyone. If the child were pricked with one of those arrows dipped in... Currer. Fuck that word. (laughs) Or some other devilish drug. It would mean death if the venom were not sucked out. You gotta blow it. (laughs) You're still speaking, by the way. But can I just jump in for a second? Please. (laughs) Uh, for a, uh, I know this is relying on some old medical thoughts, but it's actually not good to ever suck poison out. It doesn't work Oh, like it's that. not? Nope. Well, the movies, you heard it the here movies. first, folks, on well, badaudiobooks.com. No other place in the world has this knowledge been acquired. No, clearly not. Don't ever go searching on the internet for the information. Yeah, if you suck the poison out, you're going to get poison. My God. Yeah, movies what have lied to us. Concept. And apparently books, because uh, that's definitely a thing, so... <clears throat> Fuck you, Doyle. <laughs> Come somebody, at me, bro. So many Sherlock fans are pissed right now. <laughs> I'm tweeting right at you. All right, go ahead. You know where to find me. Is it still? Oh, it's still you. You have a un- remember that thing I talked about with the unclosed quotation mark. Ugh. That yeah. This is still you, baby. And the dog. It's beautiful. <laughs> yes, Watson. <laughs> of course it is. 
We'll take it home with us. But if one were to I'll use such a poison, up. pack it in my bag. Would one not try to... But take the drugs out first. I need something for the ride home. <laughs> Would one not try it first in order to see that it had not lost its power? I did not foresee the dog. But I did see drugs in it. Was I not right? It was getting high. It <laughs> was on it. substances. Yes. I yes. called it from the moment I walked in. It was a mule. It's because all you smell now are drugs. <sighs> it doesn't make it any less potent. My deduction. But at least I understand him. And he fitted into my reconstruction. He didn't fit. He fitted it. Wait a he fitted it. Yeah. No, he fitted. Yeah. Fitted. He yeah. fitted. He fitted. Most people say That's a fit. word choice. <laughs> it's fitted. It's fitted. Doyle is fitted. 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 Now do you understand? Your wife feared such an attack. She saw it made and saved the child's life. And yet she shrank from telling you all the truth. For she knew how you loved the boy and feared least it. Lest? Lest. Okay. For she knew how you loved the boy, and she feared lest it break your heart and make this entire story pointless. <laughs> Jackie. Jackie, Mr. Holmes. Jackie. I watched him as you fondled the child just now, and I'm calling child <laughs> services. <laughs> His face has clearly reflected in the glass of the window where the shutter formed a background. What? I saw such jealousy, such cruel hatred, as I have seldom seen in a human face. My Jackie! You have to face it, Mr. Ferguson! It is the more painful because... It is more painful because it is a distorted love! A weird love! <laughs> An unethical love. <laughs> A kind of outlawed love. We've grown away from this shit. <laughs> this is no place in modern society. <laughs> A manacle exaggerated love for you. And possibly for his dead mother. I'm talking incest, baby. <laughs> Which was prompted his joy, his action. His very soul is consumed with hatred for the splendid child whose health and beauty or a contrast to his own weakness. Good God, it's incredible. Have I spoken the truth, madam? The lady was sobbing, her face buried in the pillows. She now turned to her husband. How could I tell you, Bob? I felt the blow it would be to you. It was better that I should wait. And that it should come from some other lips than mine. I also wanted to make sure I drained you of all your money. Because they are not cheap, the men you hired. When this gentleman, who seems to have powers of magic, wrote that he knew all, I was glad. I think a year at sea would be my prescription for Mr. Jack, for Master Jackie. Said Holmes, raising, rising from his chair. And as long as we're writing prescriptions, Watson, make three out to me! No! For whatever you want! No! That is, uh, irresponsible of me. Only one thing is still clouded, madam. We can quite understand your attacks upon Master Jackie. There is a limit to a mother's patience. But how did you dare to leave the child these last two days?! Uh, is that me or you? I think we're talking to the mother, so it's you. I told Mrs. Mason she knew. So there's two characters that could have stopped the story from <laughs> happening. Yeah. You took me away from my drugs. <laughs> and I'll never forgive you. <laughs> but I'm the third character. Because I knew all on it Baker Street. And I was hoping for a show. And a score something new. Here's one of those freak of fire miles. <laughs> I gotta get away from my parole officer watching. <laughs> gotta score some shit. <laughs> that was exactly so I imagined. Ferguson was standing by the bed, choking. 
His hands outstretched and quivering. Did you take my shit? Why are you talking about it? Spit it out! Get it out of there! He didn't swallow him! Stop choking the man! Give me the drugs! <laughs> Give me my shit! This, I fancy, is the time for our exit, Watson! Said Holmes in a, in a whisper. <laughs> ah, I'm whispering! <laughs> If you will take one elbow of the two faithful Dolores, I will take the other. Oh, okay. We're shaking her down. I thought we were going to, like, people's there elbow now. her in bed. Uh, what? I thought we were going to do the people's elbow, like, like drop the elbow. Oh. Like, wrestling move her. Oh, we're sorry! It's a... What, what is it called? Oh, yeah! Oh, yeah! Uh, Macho Man Ready Savage. No, okay. I don't know enough about wrestling to be well, able to... Well, there's the rock. The rock's the... Is the people's elbow rock? Yes, I think so. I think the rock is the people's elbow. I don't elbow. know what any of the wrestling moves are called. Oh, dude, I... Uh, I have, you're oh, and a soaring, tumbling elbow drop from above! Yeah, there you go. Macho Man Watson's going down! <laughs> uh, it's actually uh, you, but I, I'll, I'll get you back there. What, really? I will take the other. There now. There now. And as he, he added as he closed the door behind him. I think we may leave them to settle the rest among themselves. This is the dumbest story. I have only one further note of this case. It is the letter which Holmes wrote in the final answer to that which the narrative begins. What? It ran thus. Okay. It ran thus. Is this you? This is me. Okay. Baker Street, November 21st. Re! Hang on, I gotta do Vampires. Re-vampires. It's actually me now. I just wanted you to be reading the beginning of it. Okay. Woo! Oh, you peaked. Sir! Referring to your letter of the 19th, I beg to state that I have looked into the inquiry of your client... Mr. Robert Ferguson of Ferguson and Muirhead, T. Brokers of Mincing Lane, and that the matter has been brought to a satisfaction, satisfactory conclusion. I took some possessions of theirs and flipped them at a pawn shop, <laughs> and I made them good profit. <laughs> With thanks for your recommendation, I am, sir, faithfully yours, Sherlock! Motherfucking Holmes! <laughs> well, that was the end of the first story of Jesus Sherlock Holmes. Jesus Christ. We need to pace the voices better next time. <laughs> that was a that was this is a long one. That was a long one. The first one was like I think actually the first one I think was like was it an hour? Or was uh, it the first three? recording that we did? Yeah. yeah. My ears just popped. Oh, I miss how much. Well, um so that's a story of a mystery that never needed to happen because there was no mystery for the fact that it was just simply someone not wanting to tell the other person the truth, which is that the oldest son was just jealous of the younger son, so he tried to kill the younger son with poison. And the wife knew, the maid knew, Sherlock Holmes knew, everybody knew. Except the dad, who couldn't put two and two together, apparently. And knowing that, this would have ended... That was a rough if, one. Yeah, it's like... It here's kinda, the thing. It was, it, here's the thing that bothered me about that one. Oh, I was going to say, I've, I'm, I'm revved up too. I'm what bothered me. You okay. go first. All right. Well, mine's mostly, load, load my, ready. <laughs> mine's mostly a mechanical thing. Um, <clears throat> it omitted information from the reader that made Sherlock Holmes seem really smart. Now, we talk about the South American weapons on the wall and stuff like that. It does not mention at all anything on that wall that could have been seen as a pouch or something that was disturbed or whatever. Maybe Nothing it was, was mentioned. on the, the tip of the blade? The point is, I got pissed because... I'm not pissed, but I was like, really? We're going to do that? You you hold back information from the observation. Like, Watson doesn't have the keen eye of Holmes, yeah. clearly. But at the same time, um, there, was, there was something on the wall that was not talked about. It was just added in because Doyle's, like, writing this. And he goes, well, it could have been a powder packet over there or whatever. And then, uh, and blah, 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 blah. like, there was, no dis there was no discussion about disturbance of, of anything there or whatever. I mean, it's a short story, so you can't really get too detailed. But at the same time, if the if the murder weapon or the murder substance is coming from that area that you're describing and you're not giving all the audience that much information to go off of, it really it bothers me when you're trying to set that up so that way the main character sounds like they're smarter than they are. 
It was a throwaway line. It's actually there. Really? Uh, top of page 602. There was hung a fine collection of South American utensils and weapons, which had been brought, no doubt, by the Peruvian lady upstairs. That's it. That's all I gave you. Yeah. So it, the the thing that this all came from, like the thing that was going to poison the baby one. and whatever, like that was there. But it was like, yeah, it's a single sentence. And that, yeah, that gives you. It's just I hate nothing. mystery writers who withhold information from the reader. So that that's way their characters. I'd say that's 95% withholding. Yeah, because then it makes the commi- they're trying to make the main character seem smart. Yeah. My thing is, and this is a rule of thumb for any writing, is that you should treat your audience as they're the smartest motherfuckers in the room. Yeah. So you need to make sure that you are trying to out-clever them. If you're trying to out-clever them by withholding shit, you're cheating. Yeah. That's cheating. That you're is cheating. not. Totally you're not playing on a level playing field at all. So at that point, it's, it's bullshit. Well, it's like, yeah. I mean, uh, uh, excuse me. Like, I I came along for this mystery, and here's Holmes saying like, oh, it was the oldest son, clearly, because he's so affectionate, and the father's repulsed. Because of whatever's going on there, and uh, it's gotcha journalism. It, it, it's just annoying. Like that was the part that really pissed me off is that the mystery wasn't solved. In my opinion, it wasn't really earned. The the, the no. ending, like there was no. And not only that, if the entire mystery can be solved by one person saying, "Oh, I think that the oldest son's poisoning the youngest son," to the character, like, is that a mystery at that point? Like, it's pretty bad. I I'd say I mean I enjoyed the ride. Yeah, it was fun, but the ending was just kind of like, oh, that's it. That's, yeah, that's all you got. I you guess were, you weren't you didn't have any. There's a reason why this story isn't well renowned in the Sherlockian pantheon. I'm assuming as a person who knows nothing about the books. I mean, I know of the books, but I never read them. I've only known only Sherlock f- Holmes from pop culture and movies. Yeah, exactly. I've only read a few of the stories, but I couldn't tell you much. On I remember I Sherlock read. Hound, the cartoon yeah. series, when I was a kid. Done by Ghibli. And, uh, with the Sherlock Holmes in the 22nd century or whatever. Oh, yeah, there was that one. That Sherlock was sh- Holmes. Yeah, yeah. Adventure. And Watson was a robot or something. Nice. Yeah. So the thing is, it, it, that's that's where my understanding of Sherlock comes from. So it's kind of cool to be able to read these stories because yeah, they are great. so famous. Absolutely. But clearly, this was a very B side story. Like, this is C level, in my opinion. Well, um,. What about you? Sorry if I no 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 no. Man, it's exactly you're you're completely on point. Uh, felt a little flat. Felt a little boring. Uh, yeah, I wish that it had been. This is not an adventure. This is like a pedestrian walking. Yeah, uh, felt a little like it needed a little bit more. It, it just was missing something. It felt it felt like it was missing a piece. The story, like it was just okay. So I'm sorry that our first outing was apparently a boring one. It had so much. It had such. In, pe- in my opinion, great possibilities with the name. The, I think the we're vampire both. Uh, I, hopefully, our twist on it was enough to keep people entertained. But it was definitely uh, some weak ass shit, <laughs> uh, as far as the story goes. I blame I blame the pressure that Sir Arthur Conan Doyle was under when he wrote that story. Probably it was probably under deadline. Yeah, the deadline. Yeah. yeah, under deadline, y- you just got to get it done. Yeah, exactly. So that's probably the reason why he did the things he did and everything else makes sense. But it's still bothersome later on that this is like. You know, you didn't try to fix it or go back in any way to fix that one. Yeah, but I guess his way of when you've written, it was just writ- write more. I was about to say, like when you, you just his drown thing, it just out. go, just go. Yeah, the prolific nature that was the writing that he's done clearly outshined the shit story that we just read. Yeah. So this turd cannot be polished. Just just leave it there in the dust and move on. So maybe that's way for a lot of the short stories. I don't know. We'll, we'll see. Find, we'll find I out. I'm interested in seeing how how good bad. Yeah, <laughs> these are gonna be. That's uh, pretty much it, I <laughs> think, right. for uh, for this episode. We gotta start wrapping it up here. Uh, we appreciate you coming along the uh, journey with us on this uh, Sherlock Holmes uh, story. Uh, again, this one, was, what was this one called? The Vampire of Sussex, or something? Yeah, let me I think it was Vampire it. Sussex. I think I, I think I nailed it. The Adventure of the Sussex Vampire. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> I almost nailed it. Uh, yeah, but the other way, the if you want to help even more, best way to do that would be rating and reviewing us on iTunes. 
Um, all, all of those little uh, bits help us rise through the algorithm on those platforms and help us expose us to even new listeners. Uh, so we greatly appreciate that. If you do leave us a review on iTunes uh, or a rating, uh, you know, be honest. Uh, let us know exactly what you're thinking about the show. Uh, but if you leave a review, we will read it on our podcast, on, on the air, as, yep. long, as long as it's not hate speech. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's pretty much it. You uh, can follow the show on social media at Instagram on at audiobooks. And you can follow us at indiv- bad audiobooks. What did I say? Audiobooks. I'm tired. <laughs> uh, yeah, our yeah, Instagram at, account at, 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 bad audi- at bad audiobooks. At bad audiobooks. Cool. And uh, we'd like to thank our patrons uh, for supporting us on the show. Uh, if you want to head over to patreon.com slash bad audiobooks, you can see all the cool tiers on how to support us there. Uh, Nick, you've got a, a social media account I'm sure that people can follow. Where can they find you? You can find me at Real Human Mans. Uh, Kent, you have a account as well. Oh, yes. Oh, <laughs> well, well, of course. I'm terribly yes. sorry, Jules. <laughs> I, I can't do my homes right now. I'm, no, I'm you can't. S- I'm Please fucking don't. spent. Please don't. Uh, Your but voice is so Ken- shot. <laughs> <laughs> it is pretty shot. Uh, at Kent Heidelman. Uh, you can follow me uh, there on Instagram. That's the best place to uh, follow me. And yeah, that's uh, pretty much it. Uh, when I, uh, All right, Sonic, s- take us out. <laughs>